Welcome students to Lesson 4-4, Write and Solve Multiplication and Division Equations. Before you begin or go any further with this video, make sure your book is open to page 195 and that you have out pencil, a calculator, and if possible, some post-its or a separate sheet of paper. All right, our I can for this lesson is I can write and solve multiplication or division equation. So just like in Lesson 4-3, where we were solving addition and subtraction. This time, we're gonna use multiplication or division. Let's take a look at our solve and discuss it. It says, a school group is planning a trip to New York City. There are 29 people going on the trip. So I'm gonna circle that number. That's probably important. They agreed to share the total cost of the trip equally. Ooh, share equally. That usually tells me to divide. Let S equal each person's share of the cost. So S is going to represent our missing amount. Our question is, what is each person's share of the cost? Well, first of all, we know that S is going to represent our missing amount. So we need to take our total, which was, if I look at my diagram here, we can see our total cost is $19,111. So I'm going to take the total cost that 19,111 and share equally. Well, that tells me to divide. But the question is, hmm, should I divide by S or divide by 29? Well, I think dividing by 29 is a lot easier than dividing by a variable. So I'll do that, 29. And then if I do that computation on my calculator, I end up with 659. So that must be the cost for each person. So that would be S, and that's a nine there. We're gonna be solving equations very similar to this throughout the rest of the lesson. Turn your book to page 196, and we're gonna take a look at example one, but I want you to put a post-it over the third column in the middle of your page. When we take a look at this um, example, it says Juan charged the same amount for each painting. How much did he charge for each painting? And we can see right here that he charged $45 for all three of them together. So what we wanna do is first write an equation. Well, if X is representing the amount charged for each painting, we know that three times each X or times each painting, because there are three of them, has to total the 45. To solve this equation, I don't want you to use the way the book does, so we're gonna, that's why I had you cover it up. First, remember, the number one rule, you have to draw a line through that equation. Now, this is a multiplication problem, not addition or subtraction like our last lesson. So we have to think about how we can get rid of that three that's with the X on the left-hand side. Well, we need to use the inverse of multiplication. Inverse means how do you reverse that operation? And the inverse of multiplication is division. So we are going to divide 3x by 3. Not by the x, just by the 3. But remember, the division property of equality states if you do something to one side, you absolutely must do it to both. Now there are two ways that I can actually show this problem. So first I'm going to show it with that division sign. And remember, once you've shown the division, draw a line and write down what you get as a result. Well, multiplying by three and dividing by three, those two cancel each other out, and you get x on the left. On the right, 45 divided by three is 15. So he must have charged $15 for each painting. Another quick way to show this er, equation with the work is, instead of using the division symbol that has looks like a minus with two dots, I could use a fraction bar, because fraction bar means divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by three using my fraction bar. And again, I draw a line underneath to separate work from my um, answer. So if you have a fraction and the same number is in the top and the bottom, those two cancel each other out. That's how we get X as our answer on the left. On the right, 45 divided by three or 45 thirds is 15. So we got the same result both ways. That means Juan charged $15 for each of his paintings. 
While still on page 196, I'd like you to put a post-it over the work that is shown or the place for boxes on the right hand side and complete the try it while you pause the video and then come back and check your work. So the best equation to represent this particular problem is four times N equals 52. Since she used, picked the same number of tomatoes four days in a row. So we take four N and divide it by four since that undoes our multiplication. Division property of equality is used because division is the inverse of multiplication. And when you divide 52 by 4, you get 13. So Teresia picked 13 tomatoes each day. So in example 2, we're going to write a division problem. We have the 15 members of the ski club go on a group ski trip. Student groups receive a special rate on lift tickets that is half off the daily rate. We're going to write and solve an equation to find t the total cost of the lift tickets. Well, we don't know what that total cost is, but we know that we're going to use t to represent it. And we know we have to divide that by 15. And then we are told that that um, amount is going to be half off that lift ticket price. Well, half of 79, which I'm seeing in this picture, is $39.50. So our total cost divided by the number of students will equal half of that lift ticket price. All right, to solve this equation, we're going to do it exactly like we did the multiplication by beginning with a line through our equal sign. Next, we have to decide what operation to use to get our variable by itself. Well, currently, our variable is being divided by 15. The inverse of division is multiplication. So instead of dividing by 15, I multiply by 15. Since I multiplied the left side by 15, the multiplication property of equality insists that I also do the same thing on the right-hand side. So now I just draw a line under my work and simplify. Well, on the left, dividing and multiplying by the same number cancel each other out, and I just get my variable t. On the right, I can use my handy-dandy calculator to help me out with the computation, 39.50 times 15 is 592.5. But remember, your answer needs to be in the form of um, money, and so we would need two digits after the decimal. So let's add a zero and put a dollar sign on that. And now we have found the total cost for the 15 members of the ski club. Okay, let's take a look at example three. Helen puts 2,292 stickers in an album. Each page in the album holds 24 stickers. We want to know how many pages did Helen fill? Well, the way I usually think about this is she had 24 stickers on one page. You would have to multiply that by the number of pages, so 24 times P, and that would total up to my total number of stickers, 2,292. Okay, to solve this problem just like any other, we're going to draw a line through that equal sign. And remember, to undo a multiplication, which is what 24p shows, number next to variable without an operation inside or in between, is a hidden multiplication. So to undo multiplication, we're going to divide. And I really like using the fraction bar because that's going to come in handy eventually in the future. So I'm dividing by 24, just the number part, not the variable part. But that's changing the value of this side, so that means I have to use the division property of equality and divide the right-hand side by the same number. And I know many of you would have gone straight to dividing the 2,292 by 24, which is going to get you the same answer. It's more of looking how we set up the problem. All right, on the left-hand side, multiplying and dividing by the same number because their inverses cancels out leaving you with only the variable. On the right-hand side, 2,292 divided by 24 ends up being 95 and 1 half, or 95.5. So she must have had 95 and a half pages filled with stickers. Okay, pause the video for a few moments and try the try it at the bottom of page 197 then restart and check to see how you did. 
So if Megan is reading a 630 page book and reads 18 pages per day, we wanted to find out how many days it will take her to finish her book. 18 pages per day times the number of days is equal to the total number of pages in her book. Divide both sides by 18 using your division property of equality. That gets your variable D by itself and you find out it will take her 35 days. Turn your book to page 198. We'll take a quick look at the key concept. Multiplying and dividing um, both sides of an equation by the same number can help it remain balanced. And you want to use those when you have the other one to undo each other. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. If it's a multiplication problem, use division. If it's a division problem, use multiplication. Now let's take a look at the do you know how on page 198. In problem 5, we have 18m equals 36. Each of these problems, 5 through 8, it just asks us to explain how to solve each equation. Each equation. Well, when I take a good look at this problem, my variable is on the left side after I draw my e line through the equal. And with it is multiplication. Well, I want to undo multiplication by dividing. So I am going to divide by, hmm, should I divide by 18 or 36? Well, it's the 18 that's next to the variable. So that is the number I'm going to divide by. In problem number six, after I draw my line through the equal sign, I can see that I have a division with my variable, dividing by three. So that means I'm going to have to multiply in order to reverse it. But what am I going to multiply by? Multiply, let's see if I can spell. We're going to multiply by the number that the variable is being divided by. It's being divided by three, so we have to multiply by three. Pause the video for a second and you try problems seven and eight and then restart to check your work. Did you do it right? I hope so. You'll have some math Excel questions in the next couple days that are just like this. Now for problems 9 through 12, I want you to actually solve each equation. I will do 9 and 11 with you, then you're going to pause the video for tr and try problems 10 and 12. In problem 9, remember we always start with a line through our equal sign. Then we notice that we have 23 times D on the left. So I'm going to undo my multiplication by dividing by 23. But if I divide the left side by 23, I absolutely must do that with the right side. When I finish, my 23s go away on the left, leaving me with just D. On the right, 2,392 divided by 23, that ends up at 104. Now let's look at number 11. Again, always begin by drawing a line through your equal sign. And this time I can see that I have y divided by 11 on the left side. I want to undo dividing by 11 by multiplying both sides by 11. If I do it on the left to get rid of the 11 on the left side, I absolutely have to do it on the right. So then when I draw my line and simplify, Dividing and multiplying by 11 cancel each other out and I just get y. But on the right hand side, 987 times 11, that's going to be 10,857. All right, your turn. Pause the video and try problems 10 and 12, then restart and check your work. I hope you were able to do them correctly. Remember, it is okay to use a calculator to help you with the computation if necessary.